Once we come familiar with the idea of patriarchy, many feelings are born. Of all these many feelings, one of them is anger. Patriarchy can be seen everywhere. Sometimes it's easy to find it, and sometimes it's more difficult. Sometimes it's very easy. In the honor killings, in the pay gaps, in men deciding for women's bodies, in the looks of a woman, like the Iranian female morality police officer that was speaking to Mahsa Amini, an officer who perhaps believed that a girl should dress in a way that men don't find it appealing so they won't harass her. And sometimes it's more, it is difficult to spot patriarchy, as it often hides under hawkish policies, policies whose often male administrators say are created to support women, policies like war and sanctions. But anger creates different feminisms. It creates lazy feminisms and ethical feminisms. Lazy feminism is when you are angry at a local patriarchy, but not a global one. In fact, war and suffering in the non-West have gotten justified by the feminists, by the anger of us feminists in the West. Iraq is an example. If we are not careful, our lazy anger or lazy feminism will turn to imperialist feminism. I like to become, I like to belong to a feminism that has a complicated anger. Angry at police brutality against women, angry at the patriarchal government policies, but also angry at the global system of policing that gets a pass under the name of brutality against women. What are some signs of this policing? Sanctions, cutting diplomatic ties, isolating a country, restricting trade, and naming it all under fights for human rights and freedom. I mean, has any mode of patriarchy ever been resolved through sanctions and isolating a nation? Does it even work that way? No, no, in no form or mode can sanctions benefit feminist or democratic movements. If our anger at the death of Mahsa Amini does not allow you to see how sanctions create more instability for women like Mahsa Amini in Iran, then you have parked your anger in the zone of lazy and feminist, easy feminist thinking. Two points. One, on October 3rd, 2022, a writer, speaker, feminist, Israeli-American journalist, and social media, social media company CEO who had relentlessly hashtagged for Masa Amini created a poll and said, many Iranians ask me, why does Israel not help us more? That's why I decided to do the survey. Do you support Israel's possible attack on Islamic regime centers and IRGC headquarters inside Iran? It's a very smart sugarcoating of war and aggression, targeting the regime centers as if regime and people who are opp oppressed by them live on two separate lands and are two separate groups of people, people from Mars and the governments from hell. I responded, if you were a true feminist, you would have cautioned against using arbitrary polls to justify invading a country instead of creating one for your, instead of creating one yourself. This is called imperialist feminism. On January 29th, 2023, Wall Street Journal published a piece of news, Israel strikes Iran amid international push to contain Tehran. Did this feminist poll and similar online feminist campaigns bring new social policies of change? New stabilities for women to fight for their cause? No, this feminism advanced an aggressive military project of an adversarial government under the excuse that that government is oppressing its women. Two, Asma Khalifa is a Libyan feminist famous for having freed herself from her abusive and patriarchal father. When asked, what is it that you're saying no to? Asma's response was, mostly war. I want to resist war deeply. Asma's message to people in the West was also to not be indifferent about politics. Otherwise, warmongers and sanctioneers get elected and get to decide hostile policies in the name of liberating women. I too think this is how women in Western countries can help women in other countries. It is indeed up to us women in the West
to decide where we park our anger at the parking lot of policies that pretend are supporting women in countries afar or at an ethical zone, a zone of awareness that war and isolation policies of any kind are the grand patriarchies of our times as they are systems of policing by powerful groups with weapons that want to dominate another group of men with weapons in their countries. And guess who suffers the most? Yes, women like Massa Amini. So I say long live an anti-imperialist, feminist anger against patriarchy. Happy Women's Day, you all. Thank you.